today we'll be talking about acne acne is also called as pimples so we'll be talking about pimples everything that you may know about pimples it is one of the most common diseases that we see in our pd these days it is most commonly seen in adolescents and uh, even in the prepubertal age group it is seen because of the lifestyle changes so let's discuss everything about pimples acne is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the pilocerebaceous unit i know it is very complicated i'll break it down to you so on the skin uh, we have uh, we have three different layers of the skin which is uh, from about onwards epidermis dermis and then the subcutaneous tissue epidermis is the top layer of the skin that we see and the dermis is the layer below that and the subcutaneous tissue is the fatty layer that we have in the skin so these pilocerebaceous units are seen in the dermis of the skin pilocerebaceous units are nothing but hair follicle and a sebaceous glands which are seen inside the dermis of the skin sebaceous glands are the glands which secrete oil like substance which is called sebum this is very important to maintain the skin and uh, to maintain the integrity of the skin to make it very smooth and soft when there is increased production of the sebum from the sebaceous glands acne is seen the most common sites of acne are basically on the face on the chest and upper back and upper arms these sites are most commonly involved because the sebaceous glands are increased in number in these particular sites as i said earlier the most common age group that it presents is mostly in the adolescents sometimes rarely in the adult too also it can be seen so what is the basic pathogenesis behind the development of acne we have four basic pathogenesis which takes place first is the epidermal hyperkeratinization meaning there will be increased production of the top layer of the skin when there is increased production of the top layer of the skin it will somehow obstruct the sebaceous duct thereby causing acne Secondly there can be infection by the bacteria called as propionibacterium acnes this bacteria can go on and infect the pilocerebaceous unit thereby causing inflammation of the pilocerebaceous unit third step again is the inflammation which again uh, increases the reactions immune reactions inside the pilocerebaceous gland causing acne and fourth being increased production of sebum by the pilocerebaceous uh, by the uh, sebaceous gland Uh, increased production of sebum can be caused by certain hormones like androgens which is testosterone it will increase the production of sebum by the sebaceous gland uh, the in the bacteria that is propionibacterium acnes which is present inside the sebaceous gland which will convert the tri- triglycerides in the sebum into the free fatty acids and glycerol which again is taken up by the bacteria and increases the inflammation inside the sebaceous gland thereby causing more acne and more inflammatory lesions So, what are the different kinds of lesions that we see in acne? We see something called as comedones. Comedones, in layman terms, is called as whiteheads and blackheads. So, there are two types of comedones. As such, we have closed comedones and we have open comedones. So, as the sebaceous gland with this duct passes through the epidermis and goes on to project onwards the skin. So, when the duct is obstructed inside the dermis, it is called as a closed comedone. There is no, uh, there is only a mild elevation of the skin that we see. there is no secretion that is seen that is called as a closed comedone otherwise called as a whitehead if the sebum which is present on the skin on exposure to the oxygen it, it will be oxidized and it will turn black in color that is called as a blackhead or it is called as an open comedone so these are the comedones that we see other than these we have papules pustules and nodules pustules are nothing but pus filled lesions which are seen and nodules is for the progression of the pustules will become nodules so these are the different kinds of lesions that we see in a patient of acne Like that, we have divided acne into four grades: grade one, two, three, and four. Grade one has comedones. Grade two will be papules. Grade three will have pustules, and grade four will have nodules. Based upon the majority of lesions which are seen on the patient, we grade the patient accordingly. Grade one will have majority of comedones. Grade two will have more number of papules. Grade three will have more number of pustules. Grade four again will have more number of nodules. And the treatment also depends upon the grade of the acne that the patient has. There are certain factors which will lead to increase in production of acne, like as I mentioned earlier, androgens. As the patient hits puberty, there will be imbalance in the hormones, and there will be increased production of testosterone sometimes, and that can stimulate the production of acne as well. Then, if the patient is on other medications like systemic steroids or immunosuppressive therapy, or if the patient is on anti-epileptics and lithium, this might increase the production of acne. And if the patient has any other associated disease like polycystic ovarian syndrome, or if the patient has any congenital adrenal hyperplasia, then the patient is also prone to developing acne. The BMI of the patient, also the obesity index, also will play a very important role in treating acne. A uh, concentration has to be given to this to reduce the weight of the patient in order to have a increased benefit for treating the patients of acne. 
It is also said that high glycemic foods and milk and milk products also have a propensity to increase in development of acne. So what are the treatment modalities that are there for treatment of acne? We have topical and systemic therapies. Topical therapies being benzoyl peroxide, which is most commonly used uh, ointment, which is uh, there for the treatment of acne. Uh, we have 2.5, uh, 5% and 10% benzoyl peroxide. 2.5 and 5% are used for the treatment of acne. It can be used once daily. In the night, it can be applied on the lesions and washed off in the morning. And we have also topical retinoids like adapalin, which can be used. It is mostly used for comedonal acne. Uh, we also, this is for the mild and moderate uh, grade of acne. We also have other modalities of treatment. We have, if the patient has more number of pustules, we can give topical antimicrobials. Sometimes the patient also will need uh, systemic antimicrobials. We usually prefer topical clindamycin and systemic azithromycin or erythromycin can be given to the patient. Pulsed therapy of these antimicrobials are also available. If the patient goes on to develop severe acne or nodular cystic acne, we start the patient on isotretinoin, which is a systemic retinoid. It's a vitamin A derivative. Caution has to be taken while starting the patient of isoretinoin since it is a teratogenic drug. So, especially in women of reproductive age group, it's very important to counsel the patient not to get pregnant or use any mode of contraception while starting the patient on isoretinoin. It will also alter the lipid profile of the patient. So, that also has to be kept in mind before starting the patient on isoretinoin. This is the basic simple uh, treatments available for acne. Uh, along with that, uh, using a very gentle uh, sunscreen, all, uh, sunscreen and also using uh, a gentle face wash also is, a, uh, is important. Uh, it's very important to tell the patient not to rub it on the face very vigorously because it will cause more irritation and inflammation. Using a mild cleanser and very gently using it on the rub uh, using it and rubbing it on the face will help the patient a long way. And a comedogenic, uh, non-comedogenic sunscreens and non-comedogenic face washes are available, which is very important. Again. Uh, as far as the scarring and the pigmentation is concerned, many modalities are available for that. Like we have many topical uh, creams available, then we have many uh, laser therapies to be done. All of that can be taken care of when once the acne uh, lesions itself subside, then the pigmentation and the scarring can be taken into consideration. Patient also has to be counseled about the appearance of the patient. And, and he has to be counseled that this is not the end. You know, you should accept how you are. Beauty is inside. Beauty is within. So, taking care of the skin is very important from within as well. So, eating right, meat, having a healthy lifestyle also is important in treating patients of acne. I hope this video is of some help to you. Thank you so much.